Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, basically is looking at all of the many important aspects of growing, from fertilizer to proper irrigation to controlling insects with some of the safest methods first possible, uh, disease control, and cultural problems that might exist with vegetables. So it's an overall approach or a holistic approach to growing vegetables in a safer manner that produces a healthier crop and a more marketable crop. Let me begin with insects. When it comes to IPM, it's certainly very important when you're growing vegetables to know what insects are out there. We always hear about, it seems like, the damaging insects like squash vine borers and squash bugs and other type of insects like that that can cause damage to the crop. But it's important to remember that over 95% of all the insects out there and even in our vegetable garden are good guys or we call them beneficial insects. So it's vital and important to be able to identify correctly the insect that you're seeing in your garden. You certainly don't want to go out with chemical controls wholesale spraying your garden and knocking out the good guys. By encouraging and also by protecting the beneficial insects that are out in your garden, you go a long ways toward controlling the damaging ones. That being said, at some time you may have to come to the point where you decide I have to put a control out be it chemical or otherwise. And then what we encourage in IPM management is to select the safest alternative first and work up from there. In the case of insects, it might be the idea of using some type of organic insecticide, something that could potentially be less damaging to not only other insects that are beneficial, but in some cases to the human population. So looking at organic alternatives uh, is one form of IPM where you're going to try to select the least environmental damaging control to try to take care of the insects that are causing you problems. We can also look at trap crops. Trap crops are basically planting something that will attract the damaging insects away from your potential vegetables. Leaf-footed bugs, stink bugs, and other insects like that can be very damaging to your crop. But by using certain trap crops, we can avoid this by kind of faking them out and sending them over to a different area where then we can come back and control them. When it comes to beneficial insects, there are certain ways that you can increase the population. We already know that there's a lot of them naturally out there, and this is a good thing. But in order to kind of encourage more beneficial insects into your garden, consider a few things that might help. One is planting a crop that will attract them. Colorful flowers like marigolds and zinnias and other type colorful blooms will bring beneficial insects into your garden and have them available for when you need them to attack the bad guys that might be on your vegetables. Also being very careful about spraying with chemicals, particularly early in the morning when many of the beneficials and pollinators are flying around, can be critical to not harming our natural beneficial population. Disease also is a major issue when it comes to growing vegetables. Because we live in a hot, humid environment, we have many different diseases that can take hold. Many of these are soil-borne pathogens, Others are spread and disseminated through wind and insects. By growing the plants as healthy as possible, by good fertility, by good irrigation practices and plant selection, you can go a long ways to preventing disease. When a disease is detected, it's important to get a correct diagnosis of what exactly it is and what are the best control procedures. Again, you can sometimes look at organic alternatives but along the disease line, it can be fairly limited. Diseases sometimes can be controlled simply by removing the affected foliage or lifting the plant out and removing it from the garden site, allowing the other plants to thrive. There are times, however, that some specific diseases may need the application of a fungicide or a bactericide, and it's always best to make sure you know you're using the proper product on the selected vegetable. Whether using insecticides or fungicides, also remember to read the labels and to allow the proper waiting period time on the label before you harvest that vegetable for sale or for consumption. 
Another real problem that we see in many of the vegetable gardens are cultural practices. These are things that we don't necessarily relate to insect or disease, but they could be as a result of improper planting or other natural phenomenon like cold temperatures or extreme drought. Sometimes these things are controllable and other times they're very difficult to control. It really helps when you have a good understanding of what causes these things. Oftentimes, many of the cultural problems that we see out there, whether it be something called blossom end rot that's very common on tomatoes and peppers and they get a black leathery covering under the bottom blossom side of the plant, many of those things are directly related to nutrition or irrigation practices. Again, having really sound cultural practice management in your vegetable garden goes a long way to controlling all of the problems. Nutritional problems. Knowing what you're looking for when you see a plant that's turning yellow. You know, could it be a water problem? Could it be a nitrogen problem? It takes a little time, but, but looking at good photographs can be very helpful in determining whether or not you're looking at something that's truly nutritional deficiency or is it maybe lacking that nutrition because the plant does not have enough water or even the pH or the alkalinity or acidity of the soil may be off. These are very important things that need to be looked at when it comes to looking at all the cultural practices. It's always a good idea to rotate your garden each season. By this what we mean is not planting the same family of vegetables in the same location each year. By rotating different families of vegetables out from one location to another, we go a long ways towards preventing many things from building up in the soil, whether it be nematodes, soil pathogens and diseases that would be very specific to the same type of family if it was planted there year after year. So crop rotation, as we call it, is an important component for all aspects of disease, cultural problems, and to some extent even insect problems. No matter what the problem in your vegetable garden is, it really helps to be there frequently to scout the garden to go in early in the morning and to see how the pollination is going as far as insects flying around, to be careful about applying insecticides early when you may actually be killing the pollinators, but also to be there frequently enough to see when a disease first begins to arise or even a damaging insect. When you're scouting through the garden, it's really critical that you look at all parts of the plant. We often are always attracted to looking at just how the fruit looks, the pepper, the bean, and so forth, and that's important. But look at the bottom of the plant, the top of the plant, and particularly on the undersides of the leaves. Many times insects will hide in the undersides of the leaves because that's a protective barrier from the sun and also potential sprays that you may be putting on there to try to control them. Also, if you have the ability to do it, go out in the garden late at night after the sun's down for a couple of hours and walk around in the garden with a flashlight to see what else may be lurking out there perhaps snails and slugs and other things that are very specific to nighttime activity it could be in the garden and you would not have otherwise detected them during the daytime. So when looking at IPM approaches it's looking at the entire picture rather than just saying I think I have an insect problem let's go get the most potent chemical and spray. So it's looking at taking care of the plant, providing nutrition, doing a soil test to have the pH adjusted properly, irrigating potentially irrigating with drip irrigation to keep the foliage dry and to cut down on instances of disease and providing good cultural practices like weed control keeping the competition down also planting and spacing the plants properly so that there's good air circulation in there to prevent buildups of insects and disease all these things can go a long way to preventing problems by following sound IPM practices you will be able to have a more successful garden and a heavier harvest when the time comes.